is one of the major forms of expression within the visual arts and plays an integral component in the creative K-6 art syllabus. It is generally concerned with the making of lines and areas of tone onto paper and other material, where the accurate representation of the visual world is expressed upon a plane surface. Continuous line drawing. Continuous line drawing is another form of drawing and is one in which a single unbroken line is used to develop the image. The steps in this activity are determining a starting point, tracing with eyes, tracing in the air with the hand, then drawing with one continuous line. I found this exercise to be a worthy drawing exercise for the development of my hand-eye coordination and observation skills. As artists, we need to spend a bit of time in practice to further develop our drawing skills, and this technique was great. Upside Down Drawing Upside Down Drawing is a fascinating study of learning to see the way an artist sees why not actually identifying what you are depicting or seeing. The purpose of this kind of practice is to force your left thinking side of the brain to give up identifying what you draw. Through this experience, it allowed me to focus on a specific line and concentrate on its direction and where it lies in relation to the lines around it. I thoroughly enjoyed this as I ignored the thoughts of it not being exactly the same and just went with where my hand and observation skills took me. Zentangle Method Zentangles are miniature pieces of unplanned, abstract, black and white art created through a very specific method from an assemble of simple structured patterns called tangles. Zentangles are not only exquisitely beautiful, they are fun and relaxing to create. The Zentangle Method increases focus and creativity, provides artistic satisfaction along with an increased sense of personal well-being. The motivation behind my Zentangle was to experience the form as a beginner and to provide a comparative understanding of the advanced forms of this method. In drawing this, my inspiration was the sea and the simplistic beauty of it. Walkly. Drawing is taking a line for a walk. Paul Klee was born in 1879 Germany and died in 1940. Klee was known for his drawings highlighting surrealism, cubism and expressionism. He was one of the foremost artists of the 20th century. He helped develop and break new grounds in the art world by being inventive in his methods and techniques as he experimented with combined media which had not previously been common. Klee was famous for his continuous line drawings and is an inspiration of my previous drawings. Here you can see are a few of his works. Painting. Painting is the second form and is a mode of creative expression. Painting is the art of creating pictures by applying colour to a surface. Paintings can record events, capture a likeness of a person, place or object, tell stories, decorate walls and illustrate texts. Paintings can express emotions and ideas or simply be enjoyed for their beauty. Tertiary colour mixing. Tertiary colours are made by mixing full saturation of one primary colour, either yellow, red or blue, with half saturation of another primary colour and none of a third primary colour. In a given colour space, tertiary colours include colours such as olive green, burgundy, browns, tans, beige and greys. Through this experience, I then created a piece of abstract art utilising the colours of olive, burgundy and brown. My motivation behind this piece of work was to explore the array of tertiary colours and to enhance them through strokes and crosses. My inspiration was to bring out influence of nature, the colours of trees, leaves and through the cool and warm colours. I wanted to keep it simple yet inviting for the eyes. Wisely Kandinsky was another inspiration for this piece of abstract art as he is credited with painting one of the first purely abstract works. Kandinsky was born in 1866 and died in 1944. This was one of Kandinsky's highly influential abstract works and a personal inspiration with the use of those tertiary colours. It is considered to be the apex of his artwork before the First World War. Comprised in this was more than 30 sketches made in watercolours and oil paints, and they can serve as a documentary proof of his abstract work creation. Printing Printmaking is an indirect means of creating art by transferring an image or design by contract with a matrix. Printmaking, an art form, can 
consisting of the production of images, usually on paper but occasionally on fabric, parchment, plastic or other support by various techniques of multiplication under the direct supervision or by the hand of the artist. Face printing. Face printing involves all three forms of drawing, painting and printing. It is first done by outlining the picture of the face on a plastic sleeve with a felt tip marker. It is then painted with the artist's choice of colours with oil paints and then it is then transferred to make a print on a white sheet of paper. Rubbings. Rubbings is one of the most universal and perhaps oldest techniques used in printmaking. Rubbings is made by carefully pressing paper onto a carved or scored surface so that the paper conforms to the features to be copied. Rubbings in this experience was incorporated amongst the line drawing of a map. This work also incorporated the form of painting using watercolours. Through this experience I utilised the rubbings of leaves. These were added to enhance the ideas of nature. I wanted to explore the skills used to learn through expression and reproduction before adding my own interpretations. The motivation behind this artwork derived from my home of Wollongong and the simplistic beauty of the mountains, waters and the land. Scratchboard Scratchboard is another form of printing. In this process, illustrators use knives and other tools to edge delicate lines into white china clay board, plyboard or even light pack upholstery. The etching is then coated with black paint to reveal the intricate image then printed on a white piece of paper. The motivation behind the scratchboard experience was derived from fish and their simplistic extrinsic features. Aboriginal art was an inspiration behind the symbolic representations of the fish. I wanted to use traditional symbols in Aboriginal culture, the dots representing lots of happy people and the numerous lines representing people in my life. I really wanted to highlight how I could incorporate the eight ways of knowing and learning into my art. This scratchboard was then painted with black paint and then transferred onto collage of paper that I had used in my line drawing and coloured paper. I really wanted to highlight the colours of nature and its importance to the Aboriginal people of this land. This experience incorporated the forms of drawing, painting as well as printing. Margaret Rose Preston was an influence in this experience, as in her quest to foster Australian national art, she was one of the first non-Indigenous Australian artists to use Aboriginal motives in her work. Preston was known as a printer and paintmaker. She was born in 1875 and died in 1963. One technique she used involved printing with large blocks of wood in black and then adding colour to the print by hand. The effect of this brooch can be seen in these works. Sculpturing An artistic form in which hard or plastic materials are worked into three-dimensional art objects. The most easily recognised form of sculpting is clay modelling. That is, the creation of a three-dimensional piece of art typically using some type of clay. I used clay in my experience and found it was highly versatile, extremely easy to work with and the ideal modelling material for the beginner. The use of wire and tools was helped to use for cutting and scraping. The motivation behind the piece of work was to experiment with the clay, the use of water to mould and to understand its versatility. My goal was to combine natural objects that I had collected in order to add texture although there wasn't enough time to experiment with this process. Joan Muir was highly an incorporation towards my sculpting. Muir also combined found natural objects, which he collected during his walks in the countryside, with items borrowed from his studio, typically uniting them with elements modelled in clay. Muir was born in 1893 and died in 1983. He was a painter, sculptor and ceramicist. In 1983, just before Muriel's death, he was on hand for the unveiling of The Woman and the Bird in Barcelona. This sculpture has become a true Barcelonian landmark and continues to light people to this day. At 21 metres high and full of eye-grabbing curves, this is one of the Joan Muriel sculptures that is impossible to miss or forget.